This episode of Nuff Said is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Recording has started. Hello and welcome, friends and neighbors, to Super Connectivity. I'm your host, Charlie, the Professor Esser, and with me as always is the Blue-Eyed Bomber from the Burger Pits. Phil, Phil, me and Perch. That's the guy. Hey, Philip, so glad you could join us. Hello, Charlie. Um, so, oh man, so many things to talk about. Um, before we get to Falcon Winter Soldier... Which did drop today. Episode three, yeah. Episode three. We're halfway through the season halfway already. Through, yeah. Halfway through, man, and it's like, uh, they need to give these things more episodes. I'm sorry, six episodes is not enough. Mm-mm. I don't know how they're going to wrap it up and give us deep lore in the next three episodes. I'm already mad that certain things aren't being discussed. But we move on from there. Um, Moving on from there, there is... uh, We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, So it was just announced by Warner Brothers that the uh, the Batman, uh, uh, the Batman, uh, the new The Batman films, will be taking place on Earth 2, which is either... A Warner Brothers executive who has never read a comic book talking, it's like, Earth 2, that's something you geeks say, right? Or he is actually saying, no, it's going to take place on an Earth 2 that has the JSA, that is the, um, oh, there was actually a whole debate of whether or not that's Earth 1 or that's Earth 2, you know. As 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 I say about Marvel, everyone thinks of the six one six. So yes. you know, uh, but it's interesting in the idea that um, if this is an Earth two, I mean, it is now a separate universe, and there is going to be an expanded Gotham universe because there is going to be a Gotham show um, that you know someone should probably review on a weekly basis. I don't know who should, but someone should probably review a Gotham show. Well, some of us have a, on a weekly, weekly basis. Batman show, so yes, yes. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm down to I'm down to co-host that, by the way, and oh. that's something I might live tweet. Oh, there you go. Uh, well, it's it's going to be HBO Max. So, oh, mm, yeah. Doesn't that have an HBO component that goes, or does it go to HBO Max first and like does it at midnight, which is just annoying. Yeah, I don't know, you know if it's just like a pure HBO Max thing. So that's what I'm saying. It's a, uh, that, uh, that one might be hard to live tweet. Yeah, uh, that makes me mad. But no, but again, with the whole the Batman thing, it's like, what was it? They say Earth Two. Is it what are they counting the Snyder versus Earth One? Because on the you know Arrowverse shows, most of those shows are set on an Earth One, and Star Girl and the JSA are on Earth Two. So it's like, yeah. Although it should be noted that that is like the third, you know. JSA that we've had because mm-hmm. there is an Earth One JSA because the Legends encountered them um, in, uh, in when they went to the 1940s and that and then they had the JSA for for that for for that original Arrowverse universe yeah and now Stargirl has its own JSA but it is technically a different universe. And I don't know, it's always weird to me that there are these costumed superheroes that are so below the radar, and you the, know? And the whole JSA thing is so weird because it was like, you know, they were the original heroes of the 40s, but then once Barry Allen ran in the Jake Eric, it's like, oh yeah, the JSA is from Earth 2. But then after Crisis on Infinite Earths, when they got rid of all the multiple universes, they were like, oh no, they were from World War 2. And, you know, so it's like it's half the time they're from Earth 2, some of the time they're from the 1940s. Yeah. It's... Yeah, and you know, and in you know, as you pointed out, Smallville had a JSA too. So mm-hmm. we have had many, many multiple versions of uh, JSAs, but it would make for a very interesting take if they're going to do an Earth Two, and I think that DC did this, where they did the Earth Two modern era 
where, you know, you have Alan Scott and you have everybody, but it's in the modern era. Mm. But there are all those classic JSA characters, Starman and Mm -hmm. Green Lantern, and, of course, Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman. And, um, you know, I mean, that that would be interesting. It would be interesting to see Batman and, you know, and Superman and Wonder Woman form, or... Batman and Doctor Fate and Green Lantern form a JSA in the Bat Pativerse. We just have to see how far they're going to go and how much they want to expand it. Now, since we know they're building out a Gotham Averse, because they are going to have that Gotham series on HBO Max, mm-hmm. it makes you wonder: Okay, are they just doing a Batman lore universe? But that's a pretty small universe when you think about it. Anytime that you're confined to one city, you know, because that's the thing. It's like, you know, oh, I'm afraid of the Batman, and I'm a supervillain. I think I'm going to move to Milwaukee, where Batman's not, and I'll go rob banks there. That's a much smarter move on my part. You know? Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, if you're going to stay Batman-centric, and you're not going to bring in any other, like, you know, you're not going to bring in Superman or anybody, it doesn't, who cares what Earth is on? I, you know, I, I thought that's originally yeah. what Warner said. They're like, oh, yeah, some of these movies now, yeah, the interconnected universe thing didn't work, so were, everything's going to be its own separate thing, but now they're interested in labeling each universe. But, you know, that's the thing, is that I actually think that the interconnected universe did work. Not it a- just was roughly executed, because it kind of jammed it all together well yeah well, well like lilith said i don't think Zack snyder was your guy to build a uh, connected universe yeah but i mean even here's what i'll say you know joss whedon brought the avengers together and then did age of ultron which a lot of people don't enjoy as much the fact of the matter is is you can have a bad director yeah you can have a bad take and then just move on from it you know oh yeah i mean i think they they were kind of leaving snyder quote unofficially in charge of most of that and it's like yeah i mean josh we josh whedon might have had a bad movie or two but foggy was running the show over there so it's like exactly and but the thing is that you can then move on you know yeah. then i think is then i think is dc's biggest problem on this is that they want to commit to something and it's like you know even marvel didn't commit to everything right away you know yeah you get a tony stark cameo in the hulk yeah you get some stark tech highlighted in the hulk but really when you get to thor you know you'll get folk it's like all the little cameos basically marvel committed to cameo it's not a shared universe no they don't build that universe until the Avengers. And quite frankly, if they had really felt something didn't work, they probably would have just said, well, maybe that's not what happened, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's like DC runs at the first sign. Of, well, Warner's DC runs at the first sign of trouble. Marvel, yeah, they hit a speed bump. They're like, okay, maybe that one wasn't as good. On to the next thing. But yeah, I mean, Marvel did it right. They had a bunch of, you know, they had a, I, we had Iron, one or two Iron Mans. You had a Thor, you had a Captain America, and then you rolled into Avengers. But it's like yeah. DC. That's what they should have did. They should have did some solo Justice League member movies. Maybe, well, maybe even had Harley Quinn in a Batman movie before you threw her in Suicide Squad. I mean, I think. Well, see, that's sort of where it gets weird because I actually think. That had they done a Justice League movie, well, what it was is they did Man, of, they did Man of Steel. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It's like Batman, Superman. Everyone knows the story. I mean, you, I don't even worry about them. But they yeah. should have did Wonder Woman, Flash, and everybody before they did the Justice League movie. Well, what it, they had committed to something for a while, and then you know, unfortunately, I think here's what I'll say. I think that had Zack Snyder done his two hour Snyder cut. Mm-hmm. I think you might have had a, a a consistent DC multiverse that you could grow from. Mm-hmm. The fact that he left it and then you had Joss Whedon have to sort of fix the problems of a four-hour film, say, well, you know, we can't release a four-hour film. This isn't The Hobbit, you know? <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, it's not The Hobbit, you know? <sighs> you know, or you you would have to break it up into two different films. Or you'd have to do all this stuff. There's all these qualities that you would have had to have done there. And but if your plan was to do a four hour film, 
that doesn't really work. You know, we have to tell the story in a reasonable fashion for people going to movie theaters where they do have to get up and pee. You know, then that, and that is where I think Disney Plus sort of is lapping people in the idea that, you know, hey, if we just put out like 30 and 50 minute episodes, we can tell these arcs, and then we can also have these neat little denouements at, at the end of every episode, where it's like, oh, here is the new character, as we see in Falcon Winter Soldier, and that can pro- progress the story nicely. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but I am ex- actually excited by the idea of DC just building out another universe. And I think that might be DC's great strength, is that if they commit to a many worlds theory... Then they can say, yeah, so we're going to do the Bat Pattinson universe, and there's going to be a Superman in that universe, and there's going to be a Wonder Woman in that universe, and we never have to worry about reboots, because no, we're just going to do a different universe. And so we already have the Stargirl universe coming up, and you know maybe someday we'll have a Superman show up there, and we'll have a Batman show up there, and we'll have a Wonder Woman show up there, and we'll do the same thing with the Berlanti verse, and we'll do the same thing with the Bat Pattinson verse, which I've already mentioned, and you know, and no, may, maybe someday we'll restore a standard verse, but, you know. Um, you know, Jason Momoa is going to keep on into his aquaman verse, which may wind up rejoining with the shazam verse and the Wonder woman verse, and we may get a Superman and Batman in that universe, too, but it's going to be consistent with the Shazam verse yeah. that maybe those other characters are actually now in. You know, that's the thing. That is where things get weird and interesting. But I think that actually DC might hit on a nice formula there where they have just these many different things. The problem is, is that that's going to lead to internecine war. And I think that is one of DC's biggest problems. Because there was this whole thing recently about how fans are actively hating on Supergirl now that there's a Superman TV show to watch. And it's like, you know, again, I'm a Marvel fan, so I grew up with a Lou Ferrigno Hulk and, uh, you know, a Hammond Spider-Man. And, you know, I, I had it and I loved it, and that was my world. And I was just happy to see my red brown Captain America getting the work and getting that character's name out there. And I get the feeling DC fans DC fans want that interconnected universe and get mad that it's not. Hmm. You know, whereas I think that Marvel fans we want an interconnected universe. But if Feige says, well, no, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. now took place in a parallel timeline, likewise with Cloak and Dagger and Netflix, we'll say, fine, be that way. You know, because it's like, you know, we want the X-Men to come in. The X-Men are never coming into the Marvel, the, well, the Fox X-Men are never coming into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, the closest. The best you're going to, the best you're getting is, is Boner. Okay. You know? I mean, the closest thing we got, I think, was, uh, Today, uh, Madripoor in uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Well, but Ma- I don't even think Madri- was Madripoor in the X Men Fox universe. No, 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 no. I mean, I just mean in the X Men comic in Walt specifically yeah, yeah, in yeah. The comics. But yeah, but that's a country, you know. Man, I was waiting for Latveria to get mentioned. I know, we got I to know. Latvia. We didn't was, get to I, Latveria. I know. Yet. I was all excited. I was like Latvia. I was like Latveria. I was like, oh, Latvia. <laughs> No Latvia. You know, and you know, I, I'm waiting for Baron Zemo to say, you know, oh, yeah, I got a place. I got a little country house. Uh, my cousin, the Baron, owns it. You know, My other cousin, Baron Van Doom, I just has to be properly respectful. And he's very nice. Has a skin condition. Don't ask him about it. Um, oh, well, that's the other thing. I mean, for I mean, Zemo's in the comic at certain points has had uh, his face messed up. I wonder if his face is going to get messed up by the end of this. Mm. So he's going to keep that mask on. I don't know. I, I I think that's a lot to ask. Yeah. For the special, for the SFX department, for the actor, for or, everybody, you know. Or unless he's like vain, like Doom, and he just has like one little like scar down his cheek or something. He's like, oh, I'm hideous. I must wear the, you know. Yeah. I mean, the original idea was that the mask was glued to his father's head. And he's of X, yeah. Yeah. And then he fell into like a volcano at some point. It's, 
But then again, it's not like, you know, plastic surgery or tech technology doesn't exist. You know, there's yeah. stuff for burn victims in, in, in our world. So I assume it's a lot better when they're, when they're manufacturing visions in the cradle, yeah. um, in a 3D oh, printed I, cradle. Yeah. I have to assume that, yeah, you could get pretty good reconstructive surgery if you're a billionaire uh, baron, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, he basically got, he eventually got put into his counter uh, earth counterpart's body. Yeah. Anyway, it is what it is. But, um, yeah, I mean, who, they might mess up his face. They might glue his mask to his face. That would be weird, honestly. Yeah. Because you always have to ask, how does he eat? Because it doesn't have a mouth hole. <laughs> you know, that I, mean, was I mean, I mean, it's intravenously, maybe. I mean, yeah, I guess you can you can write a story where that works, but um, I know if you have no way. It, it doesn't. Yeah, it, it, it's one of those things where I don't think uh, Kirby thought it through in the character design. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, old, old Marvel was like DC, modern DC. They didn't mention toilets. Yeah, you know. Which I have to say, Zemo has a toilet prominently featured. When you watch and you see, there's the toilet. That's how you know it's a Marvel film. We have toilets. We wa- we listen to Charlie Esser and the Southgate Media Group podcast, where they make a big deal about how DC doesn't have toilets. We recognize the need for toilets. I mean, he must have got something for good behavior because at the end of. Uh civil war wasn't he like locked in a thing where it's like yeah you strapped to a chair like yeah we're not gonna let you move like 23 hours a day you're just gonna sit there well yeah but it's easy to get good behavior in prison well you especially when you're strapped i mean how much trouble can you get strapped to a chair for 23 hours too <laughs> yeah but the thing is is that eventually people yeah feel so and especially if you're a charmer like baron zemo you know that's the thing and, but it was very interesting that they really leaned into the comic book lore they made him a baron. Oh, yeah. Which is one of those things that I kind of feel like, man, you know, it's the interconnected Foggy verse, but he's getting way more comic booky. Yeah. Well, which is why I don't think we've seen the last of, of the, the canonical AO, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or Cloak and Dagger or the Netflix people. Cause I get the feeling Foggy really wants to weave all that comic book stuff into it. Oh, yeah. Because there's no reason to make Zemo a baron, and then suddenly he's a super rich baron. I guess it makes some sense in the idea that, well, he was able to do all this stuff after the fall of Sokovia, but like now we're kind of really discussing it. It kind of creates this idea because they never said he was in Winter Soldier, they never call him Baron Helmet Zemo. They just say he's Helmet Zemo. He was a Sokovian Special Forces. You know, so the fact that he had this royal lineage... And I forget if that he, had, Yeah. I mean, he mentions his father real quick in the one movie, but yeah, I think it was it was like... Did he, I th- this In this episode, didn't he say, I come from... Did he say he come, came from money or something? Because he... he yeah, something he says, like, I'm from royalty. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm from, from royalty. Ro- yeah. Which really suggests that, you know, his family was actually in the castle when a rock fell on him. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, he's like, I come from royalty until your friends destroyed my country. Yeah, which is another thing that Marvel is willing to do, which is ignore canon that doesn't fit the current story. You know, if we've done something that didn't quite, he's like, well, that doesn't really make sense based on what he said before. He's like, well, he just didn't mention it. Oh, yeah. It it, didn't, you know, we're not that committed. It's like, dude, it's an entertaining story, and we're telling a larger arc. It's it's not like it's not like DC where it's like, you, you know... You c- completely go against your canon. It's like, oh yeah, we just never mentioned this detail before. Yes, yeah, you know, it kind of it doesn't sound perfect when you try to dissect the logic of it. But then, why are you sitting here digesting logic? Did you see we're going to punch a guy in a minute? Watch us punch this guy. See him get punched. Wasn't that great? Look, the lady's going to shoot somebody and then punch him. Oh my god! Yeah, the Sharon. Oh. Sharon. By the way, I have to love. The way they integrated Sharon Carter's Marvel story of going off grid, getting left behind, and having to make a life in Madripoor, and because that is canon. I don't know. I remember. I can't remember when they brought Sharon Carter back. I want to say it was the late nineties, early two thousands. What Sharon I Carter? Don't know. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't uh, know if that uh, was Grunewald's run or if that was the next run. No, it was right after Grunewald. It was Mark Wade brought her back. Yeah. Mark Wade, yeah. Because, like, you know, Capsule, you know, he, he saw her die, supposedly, on video, getting burned alive. Yeah. He's like, I thought you were dead. And she's like, oh, yeah, you saw me on video. You know, how well, how concrete evidence that is that? She didn't tell a lie. Um. But yeah, well, in that one, yeah, like she kind of went undercover for like Fury and stuff, and then yeah, she got like left behind enemy lines or something. Yeah, had to like yeah, and that was the and and this was a great parallel. To, like if you were a deep dive comic nerd, if you were reading mm-hmm. those issues in the in the nineties or the eighties or the two thousands, because all time is a is a myth to me now because yeah. I'm forty, so everything happened ten years ago. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, it is it is, it is a beautiful way to call that back. And I mean, to and recognize I mean, it, part of this character's history and story. And a lot of her allies disappeared in the blip. I mean, Fury disappeared. Uh, mm-hmm. And although the only thing that kind of annoys me about this is, I'm realizing, oh, this was episode three. We've got three more episodes. Yep. Are we going to get more Isaiah Bradley, more Sharon Carter, more? Um, whoever this Wakandan lady is in the next three episodes. You know what? I I wonder if maybe at the end of six we're gonna get a cliffhanger and they're you know at the end they're gonna be like, oh yeah, you're definitely getting season two. But yeah, stay tuned. Yeah, I mean that. And that then, for what it's worth, I guess we've all been living in the blip, the COVID blip. You I, know, I mean, I'm- everything had to shut down production. And we've got you this far, and there's going to be more coming as soon as we can all get back together. Yeah, some of it might have been COVID, but I mean, as long as everyone still wants to do it, I, I mean, I, I'm guaranteeing you're probably getting a season two because they said this the premiere of season of episode one like broke Disney uh, Disney Plus record, so it's the it was like oh, the yeah. highest premiere. Yeah, because I think they said yeah it was it was Winter, Falcon Winter Soldier, then Wandavision, then Mandalorian. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty impressive, and um, you know I can totally see that. Yeah, we'll get more of this, but I'm annoyed to have these characters be introduced, and then we get no more lore or no more story with them. That to have them be these cameos, and then not get a payoff. Obviously, in six episodes, you maybe don't get a payoff, but obviously they're building a larger lore for their universe. But um. The fact that, you know, the fact that we have an active Isaiah Bradley, the fact that we have an on the run Sharon Carter, it puts us in this spot where we really want to see more of these characters. And, you know, that she stays behind in Madripoor is kind of annoying at the larger structure of it, especially given that, you know, the power broker is still active in Madripoor. And it's a little disappointing they're not further going, that they're still focusing on, uh, 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 uh Kylie Morgan. Is it Kylie Morgenthal? Is it, yeah, yeah. Car or maybe Car, is it Carly, I think? Car- Carly, yeah. Yeah, it was Kyle, now it's, now it's Carly or Kyle. Oh, no, no, I think, I think, it, I think it was Carl, and now they just added an I at the end of it, so it's like Carly. Carly, yeah, it's Carly, Carl. Carly yeah. Morgenthal. Um, which is fine. I like Carly Morgenthal. She's a fun character. Although, man, and this is one of those things we get, and again, where we get in this episode, uh, was it what they call them, Nigels or, or Nagels, which I really want to say, man, are any of these people people that are actually in the Marvel Universe? Because they're really dodging malice, which is both a boon and a detriment, because on the detriment, it's like, man, how do you dodge malice in this? But it's like, Wait, are they actively avoiding Malice because they know Netflix did Malice already and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do with that character? Are we and they really to... don't want to step on the Netflix universe yet? Or do we or do they have plans for that Netflix stuff and they don't want to Yeah, they don't want to tread there because maybe Malice is coming up somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, I fully believe Malice is coming back. Like I said, he's been experimenting on I'm sorry. You have super super cuttlefish serum and you don't give yourself a tweak from time to time I'm sorry when you got the when you've got the process stone cold and then you're dating a cuttlefish lady you're not gonna give yourself a little juice just to keep up with her in the bedroom if nothing else 
And I don't think it's malice, but the power – do you think the power broker is someone we've seen before? I mean, we're halfway through the season, and we haven't seen the power broker at all. I mean, it has to be someone we've seen before, right? Um, I mean, no. I mean, it's not going to no. be a big, big it could disappointment. Just be Curtis Jackson. Oh, man, wouldn't it be great if they actually got 50 Cent to play <laughs> the power broker? <laughs> Curtis Jackson. Yeah. Curtis Jackson. Yeah, no, I want, I'm the power broker. What do you want? I'm going to mess you up, you know? It's, I would, it would just be great. It would just be great. Um, but I mean, I, I, I don't know. I might just, I I'm think, I feel like I'm going to be disappointed if it's someone I haven't seen before. Like, I mean, I mean, the Red Skull would be the thing or like Justin Hammer, somebody. Nah, see, that's the thing. It's like, I'm not, I'm not waiting for that. I mean, uh, well, uh, no, the the best person to be the power broker would, of course, be um, oh, what's his name? Um, oh, was it uh, Nigel, <laughs> the the not real Mandarin? Oh, that yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> I am the power broker. You know that the thing is just, I don't know. <laughs> it's just then it's all just this great act to be pulled by, of course, the real Mandarin which will be showing up over in Shang-Chi, which is coming soon. So maybe that's not the wildest idea ever, that the power broker might be Sir Ben Kingsley. Oh, Sir Ben Kingsley, power broker. Mark my words. No, they um, no I mean... Or, I mean, or yeah. 50 Cent. 50 Cent. I'm like, who in between what would be the better reveal that it's 50 Cent or that, like that, in the MCU, Fifty Cent didn't become a rapper; he just became because he, you know, he was a gangster. But he actually parlayed that into a power, powerful position in Magic Four. Or if they want to tease those comics, I mean, we've said it before, but you just got like Chris Evans sitting there as the power broker because you, you know he's he's really the skull, and everyone's like, oh, oh, Captain America's back, and then you just see him with that cigarette holder and he just goes hail oh. Hy- hail hydra and it, it goes to black at the end of the season you're like oh, what the hell's that uh i mean i guess it's pause i mean, I mean can yeah, you imagine that would be amazing that, you know uh phil i'm gonna tell you that's the kind of thing that blows men's minds oh yeah can you imagine for the people who don't read the comics they'd be like what what but it's just it's it would be it would be it would be too good of a thing to do. Oh yeah, and and you know you'd be asking Chris Evans to come back for that scene. Oh, you know, I mean, actually, I'm sure Chris Evans would be happy to come back for a scene where he's sitting in a chair smoking a cigarette. Oh yeah, um, and then you know just give him the dust, and now oh now his face is all scully. Like we can get that other guy back from the skull. You know? Exactly. We we can do the guy. We can do a skull mask guy. You know. Or hell, I mean, even if you do Chris Evans' face for a couple seconds, you probably CGI it. They got enough footage of him. <laughs> That's not appropriate because you'd still have to pay him for his his image. Oh, uh, true. Yeah, there's all sorts of rules, Phil. I know, you know. I know. The lawyers are catching up to technology. Never doubt that lawyers today are actually outthinking the technology. Oh, I know. They are writing things in the contract to say, what if they actually come up with a smell of vision? Then my client's scent is his own, and you cannot replicate my client's scent on your things without his written authorized uh, permission and payment. Oh, but do you want to know the pressing part? I guess uh, Wyatt Russell's been getting all kinds of hate on the internet and stuff. Well, I don't know. See, that's the thing. I'm not seeing hate on the internet in the way that... So it's like there are hashtags for the hate that is going out from the DC fandom. Oh, no. I thought I, I thought I saw somewhere he was getting death threats or something. No, no, no. He's probably gotten... Phil, I'm going to be honest with you. Actors get death threats literally every day. Oh, yeah. Like every actor you've ever seen has gotten a death threat, at least if they're famous enough, you know. Every female actress has gotten horrible things sent to her. Penis pics. Yeah. The world is filled with horrible people, Phil, oh, and I, I hate know. to be the I one know. to break your I bubble know. on that, but yeah. So, yeah, I am certain people have sent Wyatt Russell death threats, but just the fact that, you know, I don't think he's received credible death threats. Oh, yeah. 
I, 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 do, I think he's gotten like a couple of angry nerds like, I think you're awful and you should be in a bad place because you dare not Captain America. That just, that just, that just bums me out because I'm just like, he's a, he must be a good actor because he's doing his job. You're supposed to hate this character. Exactly. Well, I mean, to be fair, from everything I've read on the subject, it's like, He's like, yeah, I'm looking forward to everyone hating me for this. He's, this is he's John this Walker. This is a character you're supposed to hate. This is John it's Walker. Like, this is what John Walker does. Exactly, but you know, along those same lines, yes, he is. He is a character you hate, but he's performed well because we just start getting that evil. And this is the thing I want to talk about: uh, Nagel's serum. Oh, wait, wait, he wait, makes wait, this... wait, wait, before we move off from John Walker, did you see, I f- interesting trivia, did you see, um, I guess they said Wyatt Russell must have auditioned for the role of Captain America before Chris Evans got it? Oh, okay, I'll believe that. So, I mean, I mean, I find that interesting that they went to him for John Walker because he, he could have been Steve Rogers in another timeline. Yeah, but he also could have been Army Hammer, so, you know. True, um, true. <laughs> woo! <laughs> Talk about dodged bullets, my friend. Oh, yeah. Because not for nothing, before all this stuff came out, I, you know, Can't I be. loved Army Hammer. As, I think he looks like Captain America. I could, He could have been Captain America, I, but, you I know. I can see the headlines now. Cannibal Cap. I can. <laughs> oh, wow, man. Well, you know, if they ever do a uh, Relics, what was it called? Relics? <laughs> Where Captain America was a cannibal. You know, the, the, the dark mirror universe of... Yeah. Um, of Marvel's, you know, you know the idea that DC eventually stole for their dark metal universe. Um, <laughs> thank you. I'm here all week. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, I I don't take the I don't take the idea that Wyatt Russell has gotten death threats too much personally. I mean, it shows that there are sick and horrible people in the world. But I think, here's what I'll say, I will guarantee you, Chris Evans has probably gotten death threats for playing Captain America. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, that's really where it gets down to it. It's like, did Chris Evans ever get death threats? Probably yes, because, you know, he's got one of these crazy super liberal caps, and I don't like that. When has Captain America ever been against Nazis? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so... No. Uh, I think uh, why Russell is doing a fantastic job playing this, but I do want to talk about this idea that you know when you talk about that serum because that is the question is does does this character have serum or does he not have serum? And if he does have serum, is he maybe a little unstable because of it? Because there is this whole thing that Nagel makes this point of. That he refined the serum, so there's no more. It's more subtle, no clunky machines. And of course, any deep dive comic book fan knows that the Vita rays are expressly what keeps you from going crazy from the Super Soldier Serum. It's the Vita ray treatment that stimulates the brain and the body in a way that keeps the keeps the super soldier serum from turning you into a sociopathic maniac. All right, kids, you want to see me make Charlie Esser's night? Didn't he say there was 20 samples of that serum out there and what Carly's mm-hmm. group has eight of them? Mm-hmm. So even mm-hmm. if, so even if John Walker and Battlestar have two samples, that's 10 there. There's still 10 left. So Oh yeah. So we could eventually get protocide. Well, Protocide would have to be actually a previous version. I mean, that's... I don't know, man. They play. They could play with the timeline. I don't know. Yeah, but then he wouldn't be a prototype. You see, that's... Or, yeah. He's called Protocide because he's the prototype. Well, it's easy enough. You could just say, oh, yeah, we, you know, two days before we, we gave it to Steve Rogers, we gave it to another guy, and he went nuts. Well, yeah, but that would be actually the original Erskine formula. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's fair. That's fair. Because essentially, that was the resolution between the two comic panels of does he drink it or does he get injected? And the idea is there's an injectable portion, there's a drinkable portion, and then there's a fire ray portion. Oh my god. Oh my god. Please. Please. Please, Feige. I want a certain uh, a certain purple purple headed, a purple masked baron to take some serum before he becomes Citizen V. Please. Please. Oh, well, you know, you might see it. Mm-hmm. Because if nothing else, he may see well. 
but obviously, you know, to to give you a little bit of the old, if you ever saw the original Swamp Thing, and, you know, it enhances what's already there, it's like, well, what if the nature of the person was genius? You know, it's like, oh, if you think you have genius, and that's what you think is the essence of your personality, maybe you shouldn't take the thing that just brings out everything that you are to the surface. Or as um, as uh, Richard Pryor w- once said, you know, uh, when someone told him that, you know, cocaine is great, it just brings out whatever you are and makes it more intense. He's like, yeah, but what if you're a real lousy person, which isn't the word he used. Yeah. And I'm assuming that was Richard Pryor. It might have been, it might have been Bill Cosby, actually, in some of his more blue days. Bill Cosby played blue, for those who don't remember. He did play blue back in the day, but, um... Oh, but what if Sam gets some serum? Sam might get some serum. Actually, you know what I actually think is the most interesting concept in this? Hmm. I actually think we're going to get a a Joaquin Torres Falcon by the end of this. Maybe, yeah. That, that, yeah. Because I think he is going to look... Because I think at the end, that that might be our last thing, is we're going to get Joaquin back into this. And he's going to be like, yeah, man, he, you know, I, I need someone to be on my side. Bucky's going to do his own thing. You, I'm going to be capped now. You want to be my Falcon? Because I was going to say, I thought maybe the whole John Walker Battlestar thing was foreshadowing. Or are we going to get uh, Sam as Captain America? And he has, has asks uh, Bucky. He's like, hey, you want to be Bucky again? No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, but that's the thing is that although there was a Bucky in the, co- I think, I think I'd have to go actually look back at the comic books they're reading to see if there is a Bucky character in the original 1941 Captain America comic books that we see in First Avenger. But um, it would be interesting if they do have a Bucky image in it, you know. But uh, but I would I w- but I would really like to see Joaquin get his own his own wings in green, you know, and have him like, I want you to be with me. I want you to be part of my new Avengers. And that is actually, that's the thing. I don't think they're actually going to go for a young Avengers. I think they're going to go for a West coast Avengers. Mm. I think it's going to be Falcon bringing together in the next arc, a West coast Avengers, which might include uh, a, a white vision. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Maybe we'll get a tiger in there. Fingers crossed. Hey, that Love tiger. Hey, that last that, that that last version of West Coast Avengers was basically Kate Bishop. I mean, we're getting a Kate Bishop. We are getting Kate Bishop eventually, yeah. And of course, as as Jill pointed out, that you know, uh, Cassie Lang already exists in this universe. Mm-hmm. We could get a Cassie Lang. You know, the Maximoff twins. We just met them, but they're not there yet. You know, so. Lots of possibilities. Oh my, oh my god! Who shows? Who, once Burn takes over that bulk, who, who shows up in West Coast as in West Coast Avengers? Oh, Master Pandemonium. No, U.S. Agent. Oh yes, yes, yes. And speaking of U.S. Agent, did you read U.S. Agent this week, Philip? Uh, of course, I did. I, don't, I find this a very hard book to follow. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, with it you. kind of jumps around a little bit. Jumps around a lot, and now we've got the fact that our pizza guy is actually a kung fu master who trained the saint, who is like actually this little skinny guy, but he injects himself and, and <laughs> Bane. <laughs> it goes all over the place here. And, and, and John Walker's so is he sleeping with Val Cooper? What? Where did that come from? <laughs> Apparently, yeah, apparently. Well, you know, once you go super soldier, you never come back. And apparently there are cow dragons in this universe. <laughs> I mean, it is, it is a weird, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm not going to stop, I'm going to stop buying them, but they're definitely weird books. It's like, it's kind of, a, I mean, here's what I'll say. Maybe well, if I was is- reading this as a, as a trade, it's sort of like, you know, if you binge yeah. something, it makes more sense. Yeah. You know, I mean, just the cutting back to the interviews of the people after the fact, you know, all these rural farmer folks and their most beloved cows. These are like really nice farmers, by the way, because these are clearly 
like, you know, small batch, organic, free range cow, dairy farmers. So that's, that's a positive. Although I don't know if you want to be drinking the milk from the dairy farmers that are above the toxic waste site. Yeah. So, but again, yeah, this is only five issue series. The next issue is the last issue. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It builds the lore. I enjoy it. I don't, it's like, there's nothing that I can say that I dislike about this book, except for the fact that I feel like in a month to month format, it's a little hard to follow because they keep on jumping around. Well, yeah. I think that in a trade, this is a, this is literally a book written for the trades, but I am enjoying yeah. it. Yeah, it's just weird because it goes, it'll go months ago, days ago, now. Yeah. Do you want to pick a book to talk about, Philip? Um, I'm sure you read Captain America 28. <sighs> the Great Tanasi Coast. Oh, wait, yours is different. Yeah, I got, the, I got this. I got now. the retro blue and white cover because we're not paying for a colorist if we can charge, <laughs> if we can sell more of the book without him. Um, no, it's actually quite nice. I actually, I actually like this style of cover. It's nice. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's not a traditional cover, but it is fun to look at on an, on an occasion. So, um, but yeah, so man, um, it's weird that the Lucans are kind of in this weird menage a trois with the Red Skull, and that they've brought it's like they're <laughs> that and they brought like Sin into their thruple as their daughter, yeah, because like you know, it's like the Lucans, you know, like the like. It's weird, but you know what? Hey, you do you. You do you, Pikachu. I mean, I'm thinking, um, that, I'm thinking that wife's kind of seen yeah, Maybe my husband ain't all cracked up to be, but that red skull, you know. Well, you know, that's what makes it a thruple, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, my husband was good in what he did, but man, that red skull, he's he's got what he's looking for. Um, you know, it's interesting, you know, oh man, the whole thing with the you know, it's kind of interesting the the parallel that Cap makes between the the kid who fell between the cracks mm-hmm. and himself. Like, yeah, man, you know, I get it. You feel weak, you feel powerless, and all you want to do is be strong. It actually kind of suggests a dark side to Steve Rogers, which is interesting because it feeds in nicely into certain things they did with the Hydra Cap arc. Where, you know, pushed in the wrong direction, the same moral compass that made this person a hero could just as easily make him a villain. Well, yeah, because it's kind of like, you know, had he not gotten the serum, I mean, he, he wanted to, to serve in the military. He couldn't have if it hadn't been for that serum. So what would he have done? Well, you know, well, I mean, that's, um, well, that's always my big argument there, you know, because, you know, as, as, as me and Maz talk about over on Full Stream Ahead right now, as we're reviewing Falcon and Winter Soldier, what if Cap had gone to Palo Gordo like a good so- soldier? If he had gone and helped the scientists, maybe there'd be a very different world. But, um, it's interesting in how they break it down, and I do like that. Um, you know, we got our daughters of liberty. We get, we find out that Ag- Agatha. Harkness. It was Agnes. Oh, it was Agatha all along. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, it, it's interesting because it's a nice parallel because essentially what they're talking about is the Mad Bomb. Mm-hmm. You know, this idea about harnessing hate. It's like, oh yeah, I used, the, I created these. It's actually supposed to harness positive emotions, but they made versions that harness negative emotions. Which again shows that whole sorcery angle, which is neat. Um, honestly, I think, I would think that Cap would be more aware of drugged weapons that nick him more at this point. Cause isn't this like the th- second or third time yeah. he gets hit with, with a drugged weapon that knocks him out? I mean, how many times has he been hit with drugged weapons since World War II? Come on, yeah. Yeah, I mean. I mean, Actually, one of the, that was one of the things I always liked about uh, there was something they called out with um, Sue Storm. It's like, yeah, I'll be honest with you. At this point in my life, I just get a little buzz off, and I've been gassed so many times. It's kind of nice, you know, get that little, I mean, ooh, was, a little nerve toxin. Yeah, if nothing else, Steve should know by now not to turn his back, even if he thinks an opponent's down. Yeah, you know, it, it was just him and her on the roof. It's like you know, I can stand and face you while I'm making my call. Hmm. Yeah, but, you know, it's an interesting aspect because we do get this whole 
whole scene with uh, Sharon and Cap at the end, and I get these feelings of the old, you know, hubris is, you know, the devil's favorite sin. Yeah. Because it's the one that we all succumb to, and it's the one that can be the most destructive to us. Because, you know, why not be prideful? Why not say, I'm the best and I can do it? I don't need no help. Anyway. Uh, next book, Philip. Uh, did you read Black Cat number four? Of course I read Black Cat number four. Um, so who are these Hobbes' heroes? I'm not sure. That must have been in something I didn't read, but I do know the, that li- I, I do recognize Lily Hollister because she was, again, like I think she even says, you know, she, her father was – this was like in the beginning of Brand New Day and Spider-Man. Like her father was running for mayor of New York. She was dating Harry Osborn. Uh, and then mm-hmm. she – but then she ends up getting pregnant by – well, she's dating Harry Osborn. She gets uh, impregnated by Norman Osborn. Norman, keep it in your pants. I know, man. And, ba- and, basi- and, and, bas- <laughs> and basically, yeah, Harry was just like raising the kid as his own – you know, his brother as his son. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, Wait, Lily- is that Normie? Is Normie actually Lily Hollister's no, kid? That was another kid. But again, with the, again with the with the whole kindred thing, I don't know what the hell's going on with Harry at this point. I, I got to be honest with the entire Osborne family. I mean, I get the feeling these guys were brand new, dang it, long before Peter ever got into the business. You know, I mean, maybe it's just me. I'm not going to be surprised if at the end of you know this whole kindred stuff we see that Norman's been making deals with the devil for years. Yeah, you know, Mephisto. Yeah. Well, you know, for what it's worth, we kind of get the idea that maybe Howard has been. Yeah. So maybe if you want to make it in this world, you got to make, you got to, you got to, you got to pay the piper. Um, you know, honestly, it's kind of fun and nice the way that it ends here with, you know... Black cat, black cat being the encouraging joker to her. It's like, yeah, you're unstable, but you know what? I'm not that stable either. Let's be best enemies. And I don't know. I, I really like it. I like the storytelling style. I like the notebook aspect of it. Um, I got to imagine that costume smells to high heaven because it's like you know, you know, it's just it's just such a neat. Neat, neat suggestion of how these characters are. Because, again, we get no suggestion of powers for any of these people. I mean, the her, her friend she's talked to, they never give that character's code name. He's got, like, a little devil fork on his on his chest. So I'm assuming they're a Damien Hellstorm, and they're shirtless, so I'm assuming they're male. Um... I mean, they they did. I think she. I think they did mention real quick in this issue that she got powers or something from Roderick Kingsley. Because yeah, when, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when, the he, Hobgoblin. Yeah, the yeah. original so Hobgoblin. It's... He was laying low for a bunch of years, and I guess he was like giving out either you know like powers or like you know just uh, villain uh, hero yeah. villain uh, things to different people. I guess if they can meet his. Yeah. Place. Well, the suggestion is from it that the that he created. That he at one point got this idea and said he was going to be a hero instead of a villain, and created the Hobbs heroes, yeah, Hobgoblin heroes, and apparently that was something in Hobgoblin Axis, Axis. So I don't know. Um, uh, um, another the the last oh. book I read this. Oh yes, I, what, sorry, I looked what? up Hobbs heroes. Um, it. Uh, yeah, Axis Hobgoblin number one from 2014. Uh, yeah, the Hobgoblin was the leader. Uh, members uh, included, first name up, Demolition Man. Wow, my Dennis Stuffy was in there? It says Demolition Man, Flower Girl, Leather Boy, Queen Cat, Rocket Head, Water Wizard, and Wild Streak. Oh, he's Water Wizard. That's the Trident thing, because that's... But that can't be that can't be the Water Wizard. That has to be a different... I don't know. I don't know if uh, any of these people are. You know why? You know why Hobgoblin was creating heroes all of a sudden? That's that. That's right. It was during Axis. Remember that spell that inverted some of the. Characters? Oh, I remember the Axis. Yeah. yeah. Turns everybody from good to evil because that's when we got superior. That'll... That's when we got Superior Iron Man. Yeah. Who died? It's Superior. So. So yeah, he just. 
Kingsley must have got hit by that spell. Yeah. So, DC, you're not the only people that can wipe out an entire universe and bring it back and just change stuff and ignore stuff. Just when Marvel does it, we just we just don't care because the stories are so good. <laughs> that's the thing. It's like when you establish, like, yeah, we just brought it back. Oh, we brought it back different. It's like, yeah, that's fine. Okay. We, we just want you to say we brought it back different. You know, it's yeah. like when you just the entire universe is reborn, except Parts aren't reborn. Well, maybe you should like just pick one or the other. You can say the entire universe was reborn, but that the Green Lanterns, all their history is fine. <laughs> you know? <sighs> and maybe we're just going to say that in this universe, Kyle Rayner didn't go crazy. You know, what was his name? Hal Jordan didn't go crazy. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of books that jump around a lot, The Union. Oh. It's an interesting book. Um,. It does jump around a lot, because we get back to the history of this character, the greatest superhero you've never heard of, Britannia, um, fighting a character named the Sponge, who apparently can absorb powers. Uh, and we have a evil villain who just seems like a British TV Avengers evil villain, Dr. Croc... Croc... Uh, Croc... Ed... Adil. Um... <laughs> So then they called me Dr. Crocodile, Dr. Croc, and he's just mad that they gave him a stupid supervillain name. Um, yeah, it's weird. Um, and him and his team pretty much dispatch a bunch of people. There is, like, weird British magic lore in this, which I enjoy at the end of the day. I've always liked that, you know, because we are England, blah, 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 blah. Because you have, like, the old, the last of the beef eaters, and he's, like, an old guy, but suddenly he's, like, super spry and can jump out of fireball ways. He still gets punched, but he also, interestingly enough, makes, this, makes the statement that, yes, you can dis- you can kill me, but two more will rise in my place. So, um, there's more there, and we get the idea that the entire reason that the British Empire existed was because the that Queen Elizabeth had a dark wizard, and the dark wizard gave her the Empire Stone. And whoever had the Empire Stone rules the world. Then we realize that at the end, plot twist, spoilers, the guy who founded the Union group, this is all part of his master plan oh, boy. to get the Empire Stone. So now he's the biggest uh, crawdad on the block. So yeah. It's like the eighth most powerful magical stone in the Marvel Universe, you know. And uh, there you go, the Empire Stone. Um, I mean, I I enjoy it as a concept. Again, it's a book that I think will read much better in a trade than in a month-to-month reading. Some things are really good to binge. Other things, the story is written better to be read in one thing. Hmm. You know, and, you know, and for what it's worth, that's the thing. I think the Snyder Cut would have worked better as a series in those four hours than as four hours of having to sit through it all. But, Mm. you know, such is life. Um, Anyway, do you have any other books you want to talk about this week, Phil? Uh, The final thing I wanted to mention real quick, um, King in Black Ghost Rider number one. I mean, basically, it's just beating on uh, symbiotes, but Johnny Blaze was still dragging Mephisto around. At the end of this, they put Mephisto back on the throne of hell. Okay. Because they're like, you know, it's either him or Lilith, and they, they said they'd rather deal with him than Lilith. Yeah, well, you know, I know Lilith. She's a great person, but mm. um, her and her armadillos, you know. Uh, no. That's just rank sexism. Lilith, write them a nasty letter. Well, I think they're uh-huh. saying Lilith is more competent than Mephisto. So, oh, like, yeah. we'd rather have this idiot on there than, you know, somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah, you know. Fair enough, fair enough. It's why you really never want super, you never want Captain America to break bad, because he's way more competent than you are willing to accept. But I was just wondering, uh, how, what does this, how does this tie in with the Avengers stuff? I mean, is this like going to be part of the catalyst that gets us to Heroes Reborn? Is Mephisto back, has to be back in hell? Well, I did see, well, I get the feeling, because we do know that 
Coulson coming to the coming back to life was something Mephisto orchestrated, mm-hmm. and the idea and the ability to create the LMD um, Squadron Supreme was something that Phil Coulson spearheaded. Mm-hmm. So you know, I mean, I think there's a possibility that it was Mephisto's plan all along. Mm-hmm. So. You know, that, yeah, you know, and especially because he knew that Lilith would be too competent, would overplay her hand, essentially. That, you know, no, it's, a, it's like we are immortal esoteric beings. Yeah. We don't, we, we play long games. It's sort of like, you know, uh, him from Powerpuff Girls, mm-hmm. where it's like everything he does, it's just, just this little tweak. It says, but then it'll do this. They'll, Eat the candy, and their teeth will decay. <laughs> By the way, super excited for the live-action Powerpuff Girls uh, show, and I guarantee you, him will be central to it because it will be about how he, how him has destroyed the Powerpuff Girls by these little tweaks, little by little over the years. And now look at you, and the Powerpuff Girls will have to come together to regain what it was that made them heroes and defeat him. Mark my words. Words have been marked. Phil wrote it down. There you go. There you go. All right, Philip. Uh, hey, Phil, I hope you enjoyed listening to the show. You know, a lot of people can't enjoy listening to this show because they buy 99 cent store headphones. And those are just not good for listening to the show because they don't work half the time. You spend a dollar, you get maybe one of those headphones work for a couple of days. They're always wired headphones, which means that they're always coming in and out. And, um, you know, maybe it's time to just realize that a larger upfront investment in a headphone will give you better headphones long term, like... A tweaked audio headset. Um, if you go to tweakedaudio.com right now, you can get Bluetooth enabled headsets that will work wonderfully with your listening device and likewise will be a little bit cheaper than the retail price because we're going to give you that coupon code Southgate. That's going to save you upon checkout. And then once you're done with that, you should go over to huntingkiller.com, use that same coupon code Southgate to get a discount on uh, essentially what's an escape box delivered to your, an escape room delivered to your home. It basically, it stimulates your mind in a way that does not need electronics because you just get the clues, you read the words, you build your murder wall, and that is fun for the whole family. And at huntakiller.com, use the coupon code Southgate to get a discount on that as well. Help Michelle Gray solve the cold case. Um... And if you do that, that's great. And if you don't do that, that's great, too. Go down to our show notes. Click on the link to Amazon. Go to Amazon. Buy anything you can, well, please, because it's Amazon and they have a lot of stuff. And while you're there, maybe check out Pod Life, the book, book written by the podcast community here at Southgate Media uh, about why we podcast, now we podcast. It is available both in a hard copy that you'll need after the Fall of Society, and a digital copy that you can take anywhere until the Fall of Society. And if anyone does that, Philip, and they wanted to reach out to you or get merch of various shows like the Capes and Lunatics Network, how can they find you? I can always uh, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com, or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. Uh, you can find links to everything Capes and Lunatics at Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. And remember, uh, all things Southgate Media Group, uh, southgatemediagroup.com. Excellent. And, of course, you can always write to me in that old-fashioned email way, the way our mothers and fathers once did many years ago at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at the gmail.com. And, of course, follow me, well, not the gmail, but just at at Gmail, because I don't think there's a dumb Gmail site, although that's probably something that Gmail has already copyright, so that if you did that, it would go to your Gmail account, but I don't want to get into that. But anyway, why don't you follow me on Twitter? Is it live tweet things occasionally when I feel like it? At Charlie Esser, that's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-S-S-C-R. 
Look for the two E's in the middle. For what? For quality. Bing! Thank you, Maz. He's always it's there It's legally for me. admissible evidence. Yes, it is, Maz. Case dismissed. He's closed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming through for us once again here at Super Connectivity. Why don't you come back again next week and super connect with us again? Good night. Good night. Folk. <laughs>